morning of the last day of the IGF, so everyone who is there is the most enduring, uh, really the most enduring people, and, who, and, uh, and we really, really like to see you here. So today, is, uh, today we are going, uh, organizing, and uh, on behalf of uh, our two Secretary General, Dr. Hamadun Touré, the event of the series of uh, Secretary General's Open Talks, which is the series of events that are designed to, uh, to gather information from all the stakeholders uh, about the role, specifically now at this series, about the role of, role of government, governments in the multi-stakeholder model of internet governance. So, as uh, Dr. Ture also said if, you know, quite a few times, you know, no one has a monopoly over the good ideas. And, the idea, and therefore, we think it's important to get as many views as possible to to then for the Secretary General to be able to deliver those views to the member states, for them then to, uh, to take to the account in their discussions on those topics. And uh, one of the most, uh, you know, the, the event that will happen very soon is a council working group of, on internet-related public policy issues that will happen in two weeks' time, basically. So we will be, so Secretary General will be preparing a report on that. So this event is the second event, the first event we had on October 8th uh, in Geneva and had a very, very lively discussion and brainstorming exercise and collected some views and my colleague uh, Prita Molo will present some of them today. Uh, also, we have, a, it's not only event, it's not the last event, we also have a crowdsourcing platform um, on, that you can find from ITU uh, main website, www.itu.int. From which, uh, from which we're asking people from all around the world, every stakeholder, to submit their views and their ideas, and again to enrich that debate. And uh, over this, over this uh, few days here in Bali, we've already been hearing a lot of various inputs, ideas that we'll also kind of uh, we'll take into account. But I think today's, today's, excuse me, today's, today's a specific. Um, uh, Opportunity, at least to to tell your views direct, you know, to say your views directly for those views to be directly accumulated and and presented, and all those views will become a part of the of the report I said, and that report will be made public, and we'll be very happy to share that uh, to share that publicly, and you'll be able to see that. We're also uh, really honored today to have with us um, uh, Ambassador of Brazil, Benedicto Fonseca. And uh, this is also, this is particularly not only important because of the discussions here in IGF that are already very, you know, in the new topical issues, but Brazil has been engaging in that, you know, in that topic even much earlier and much before. And we had in May this year, we had an event called World Allocations Policy Forum, and some of you might have been there. And in that World Allocations Policy Forum, we had a very good debate with a adopted six opinions of various topics uh, important for internet-related public policy. But we also had a very lively discussion on the role of governments, and that discussion was initiated by Brazil, and that's why we're very happy today to have Brazil uh, putting you with the views that could, uh, could enrich today's discussion and then could help you then to, to give that feedback. So, so that is, uh, so that is uh, for me, with that, I really would like the ambassador to share Brazil's views, and then after that, we'll, we'll have some presentation from my colleague. Before we talk. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I, I'd like to thank this opportunity uh, to, to be with you and discuss a little more about this issue, which is very important for us. And uh, since we are pursuing uh, what can be perceived as so many different uh, objectives. I just want to make clear that we want to be consistent with uh, an overall view we have of the operation of internet and operating a fully multi-stakeholder setting. So basically our proposal uh, aims to what we call it, uh, how we call it, to operationalize the roles of governments in the multi-stakeholder uh, setting uh, and here, this world operationalize is very important because we are not seeking to expand the role of government or to redraft the, the role of government as per the Tunis agenda, but rather to make sure that the, the, the recognition of the role and the responsibilities of governments in the operation of the multi-stakeholder uh, uh, model uh, is fully uh, lives up to, to, to its challenge. And basically what we are targeting are the 
the, the capacity that is needed for that to happen. Uh, so what kind of information of what is going on, uh, capacity to operate. So this is the, the focus of the proposal. So the recognition of, of the importance of the role of governments and then seek ways through which that can be fully implemented in cooperation with the other stakeholders. In that sense, uh, we are very glad with uh, very important developments that just uh, uh, happened after the discussion we had in May in, in, at the WTPF, which was the presentation of a proposal on the part of the UK. And uh, Minister Ed Vesey spelled it out in the pre-event on, on this issue. And uh, we th think it's very uh, important uh, piece, an important document that spells out, it sees the same issue from a different angle. We are seeing it from the angle of the capacity needed for the role of government to be operationalized, and the UK proposal, in a way, the UK document reflects on how governments, once they are fully empowered and, and, and have built their capacity, what is expected from governments in terms of providing the appropriate uh, legal framework in uh, ensuring rights, uh, in uh, assisting and being a catalyzer for multi stakeholder cooperation. So uh, I would say the, the same uh, issue is seen from different angles. And uh, we are very glad that we have said this at the WTPF. We initiated this discussion within the ITU, but we think it's a discussion that belongs everywhere. Uh, in each and every body, process, forum that deals, that operates in a multi-stakeholder model, this, the discussion belongs there. And also the discussion belongs from the point of view of other st stakeholders' participation. So we consider that at the same time that government should reflect on how to have their role fully operationalized, other stakeholders uh, uh, should do it. But, and this is not something new. We are not inventing something. We are just stating something, trying to collect and reflect on something that is already in operation. Uh, our concern as a government, of course, we are looking from the point of view of government, but we are also concerned about participation of other sectors, other stakeholders in multilateral, uh, international uh, uh, organizations dealing with Internet. And uh, you see, uh, sometimes, uh, from the point of view of government, we use multilateral, not many multilateral from the point of view of intergovernmental, but I think this is, from a government's perspective, when we mention multilateral, we mean most of all not something unilateral. That does not mean it is excluding others. So some, one thing that has been uh, an idea that has been worked around in this forum is the needs for us maybe to work around the concept, the language, because sometimes when we say one thing, it is understood on the other way and vice versa. So uh, as a slip of tongue, I said much lateral, but uh, immediately I know that this conveys uh, a certain, <laughs> leads to, to many, which is not the intent. And uh, by the way, I just saw that yesterday our president just referred to multilateral again. <laughs> <laughs> and then people start to think, well, she said at the UN uh, debate, multilateral, and then she rephrased to multi-stakeholder. Now she's going back. And uh, I would not uh, see that this is, uh, that there is any contradiction because uh, we are working in an environment in which we see a very clear difference between uh, those terms. But especially at the, 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 the level of a president, sometimes it's difficult when and she's asking for, responding to a question, and, and uh, the, the terms used are not, let's say, exactly the technical words that would convey the ideas. But at the same time, President Dilma has made it abundantly clear that her view is fully in support of the multi-stakeholder model. So I think this, we should not maybe be too much concerned about any particular word, but see the, the fuller picture. And I'd like our proposal to be seen in that larger picture that basically what we aim, and after the week meeting, and we have seen uh, in, in a number of places here in panels, uh, the, uh, the consensus that what happened that week reflects uh, that we need to devise new ways to operate in a multi-stakeholder setting that would allow 
for less divisive acrimonious results. So basically what we aim through our proposal by seeking to operationalize the role of governments in cooperation with other stakeholders, but at the same time stimulating other stakeholders to engage in the same discussion, is to achieve uh, an environment in which we can work in mutual recognition, in mutual respect for each other's role, uh, that we really recognize the legitimacy of participation of others. I think this is a very important point because uh, in some discussions we see there is even a challenge of the participation of, of other parties. I was present at the first open forum in Geneva it just followed uh, on the first preparatory meeting for the WISIS Plus 10 review that is being led by uh, ITU in cooperation with other UN agencies. And uh, it was very interesting because the theme of the open forum is, is uh, should governments participate? Is there a role for government? I think that is there a role. So I was just reflecting that if we turn this question around and we ask, is there a role for civil society in internet? It, it will seem something so absurd that people will immediately uh, uh, challenge even the title. But when we apply it to governments, uh, for some people it's natural, and some people come and say, no, there is no role for government. So I think we must work in an ambience of mutual recognition, mutual respect, uh, and recognize the legitimacy of participation. Of course, that will have different meanings in different contexts, in different situations. So what we are proposing is to take a view of the larger picture, see what can be done, but also not to lose the opportunity to best equip ourselves. And again, we are looking from the angle of government, but we think we recognize the legitimacy of any, all other stakeholders to do the same that will enable us to, to work in an environment that will achieve the, 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 the vision that emerged from the Tunis agenda. Stakeholders working together with a shared objective, but in different roles and according to different responsibilities towards a shared goal. This is basically what we have initiated a discussion. I'm very glad to see this is taking place here. I just heard that ICANN is also taking on board this discussion, which is not new to ICANN because we have been discussing how to uh, further uh, uh, make more effective the participation of GAC. So it's something that we want to uh, foster this reflection. We think it's, uh, the moment is mature for that. We have seen uh, in the various uh, interventions uh, uh, th 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 that sense that we are living a moment in which we should reflect on that in, in the light of the growing importance of internet for all of us and of the need to make sure that we uh, go together in, in the spirit of the Tunis agenda, which is our main objective. So maybe I should stop here and I, I already apologize because in 10 minutes I should move to, to another meeting, but I, I cherish this opportunity to be with you and we look forward to be working with all of you to develop those ideas and to make uh, this uh, a reality to the benefit of, of, all the, of all of us and for the system as a whole. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And we really uh, appreciate your time here with us. And I think it sets a good basis for our further discussion. But before moving to you, and so I'll just ask my colleague, Frida Malo, to give a very short presentation on what's been happening so far and will be happening further with the consultation. Then we'll move. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Ambassador. It's, it's, it's an honor to have you here. Uh, so this, today's uh, uh, event is primarily for us, us here, to just listen so, uh, to your views, uh, your ideas. So I'll very quickly run through the presentation, very, very quickly. Uh, of course, uh, this is the ITU Secretary General, Dr. Toure's uh, informal consultations on internet-related public policy issues. And it's part of a series of uh, uh, consultations, which we call as Open Talks, uh, which was long, launched by the SG uh, essentially to uh, get your thoughts, uh, for you to share your ideas, and continue the discussions which have been happening in other platforms, including the IGF. So a little bit of background on this. Uh, 
the issue of uh, uh, internet related public policy uh, has been raised in uh, over the past several years not only at itu at various fora uh, not only among policy makers or with an industry or civil society but in the general public so we are approaching the 10 year anniversary of uh, visas and, uh, and we've seen this topic being discussed uh, over the entire 10 years uh, one of the recent ones that Thomas mentioned was the uh, WTPF, which I see many of you here uh, were part of, and uh, with 900 delegates, uh, multi-stakeholder participation, and uh, we agreed on six opinions, and there was a seventh one, which was uh, on the uh, role of governments, which was the Brazilian proposal. Uh, very good discussion on that, but uh, we didn't have a consensus in the end due to lack of time. So, uh, but there was consensus that this topic should be discussed further. And this uh, series of open talks is one of the opportunities to uh, do so. OK, what are the open talks? Uh, we uh, wanted something which was informal, open, inclusive. Uh, anyone, anywhere can participate. So we, we came up with three different uh, formats. Uh, one was uh, a world cafe. Uh, I'll tell you a bit more about it. Uh, second is the IG of town hall meeting, and the third is the online platform. Uh, Thomas just mentioned that. And the plan is to have all the comments, the inputs that we receive from uh, each of these formats uh, to be the essence of the discussions, to be reflected in the Secretary General's information document to the Council Working Group on Internet, which is on 11th and 12th of November. Okay, now the World Cafe. Uh, it was organized in the in uh, the second week of uh, October. Uh, for those who don't know what a World Cafe is, it's, it's a highly interactive format with uh, people sitting around small round tables, uh, uh, interacting with each other, the ideas coming out in, uh, in uh, small clusters. And then you see a, a, a pattern kind of forming. We just have a video which we've put online uh, on the World Cafe on our website. So it will be interesting to uh, have a look at that. And uh, we had a, uh, around 50 participants, a very diverse group. Uh, and uh, these were people who were also involved in the Visus Plus 10 uh, discussions, a multi-stakeholder uh, gathering. And uh, the topics of discussion was, uh, of course, on the role of governments in the multi-stakeholder model, uh, highlighting some of the key issues for uh, possible contribution of governments uh, that they should be involved in, and suggest, uh, suggesting ways for governments to improve their interactions with it, uh, other stakeholders. What came out of the World Cafe? Uh, a number of interesting ideas. Uh, it was a two-hour long discussion, very interactive with uh, people mixing uh, uh, continuously. And uh, some of the ideas which came out was on the, on the role of governments. Uh, one was offering an enabling environment. This was a theme which, uh, it's a, it was a recurring theme, came up again and again. Uh, offering an enabling environment to ensure dialogue and uh, to uh, stimulate cooperation. Second was uh, to ensure that public interest is taken into account and human rights are protected. Again, something which uh, came up very often in, that, uh, in the discussions. Uh, where could uh, governments play an active role in? Uh, some of the areas which were mentioned was uh, ensuring accountability and transparency. Cyber security was a topic which came up. Management of critical uh, national infrastructure resources. Uh, protection of the, the weakest and the most susceptible. Uh, raising awareness and uh, educating citizens about the use of the internet. And uh, also on how could governments improve their interaction with other stakeholders. Some of the points which came up was enabling the participation of all stakeholder groups uh, through various ways. Uh, ensuring transparency and openness in the stakeholder consultations. And also to, uh, to legitimize the results which came out of the stakeholder consultations. The the other platform that uh, we have uh, uh, to, for you to share your ideas is the online platform, which is the, which, uh, it's, it's a crowdsourcing platform called Crowdicity. And uh, this was something we used uh, at the, uh, uh, in the preparations for the youth forum uh, to gather the ideas. And uh, this is an exercise, uh, this is the tool that we are uh, using here, a highly interactive tool. Uh, for you to post your ideas. Uh, you can see at the left uh, bottom, uh, you have this box called Got a Great Idea. So you can go there, post your idea. People can immediately see this. Uh, you can have a discussion or a debate online on this. 
and uh, people can also vote on the idea. So this is something that has been live since October 8th, and we really invite you to uh, uh, go online and uh, uh, give us your uh, ideas and your thoughts. So today's session, uh, these are the three questions that we are again posing. Uh, it's, it's similar to the World Cafe, but it's a different format. So uh, we we would be happy to hear your views on each of these or uh, on all of these together. So uh, with that, uh, Thomas, i give you back the floor. Thank you. Uh, one last thing. While the World Cafe was going on, we had a very talented lady, uh, an artist, who captured the discussions in the World Cafe live, right there, in the form of a drawing. So you can see how the discussions progressed and... Uh, during the World Cafe, I'll just leave this uh, there while we uh, uh, we conduct the session. Thank you. Yes. Yes, please. Even though, as I said, it's, it's please intervention as well. If yes, yes. Uh, Lorenzo Cupillo from Telecom Italia. Is the next uh, uh, council on uh, interrelated matter? Uh, meeting of November 11, 12, open to the sector members or not? No. Thank you very much. So now this is the time to, for you, you know. So it's not about questions, it's about interventions, but it's anything that, you know, it's anything you wish to share on those topics, but maybe we can also bring back three questions, I think, on the, on the slide, on the, and, you know, as I said, these, you know, the B, as provocative as you can, you know, and, and the ideas that you think they need to be discussed. And here, and most probably, we had a, quite a bit of food for thought in this week. So, you know, it would be great if you shared what you, you know, what you think, starting reflection. Who will start, please? Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Jackson, and uh, I work for the government of uh, Vanuatu. Um, I'll just uh, acknowledge uh, Thomas and Pidam for this uh, session. I'll just share with you our experience, uh, especially on the role of governments in multi-stakeholder model of the internet. Uh, firstly, developing countries do have a different uh, view on how uh, the whole uh, model works. And uh, a fact is uh, a lot of developing countries depend on government for uh, basically everything. So our experience, uh, as we have in this IGF, is we uh, governments usually have a lot of battles with uh, civil society to keep uh, services going. And as government, our responsibility is to ensure that uh, services reach our citizens, which is uh, often very uh, difficult. Uh, while taking this into consideration, we also note that there are lots of uh, competing priorities such as uh, global warming infrastructure, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the important role of governments in uh, multi-stakeholder is to ensure that the civil society, uh, non-governments, contribute to uh, policy development processes, and also uh, involve the civil society in taking the lead. However, government from my view, should take the lead in the multi-stakeholder model setting, uh, to firstly, to protect the interest of the citizens within the country, as well as having continuous dialogue with the civil society. And most importantly is to develop policies for the country to encourage investment and growth, uh, not only within the ICD and telecommunications sector, but uh, also in other sectors. And uh, not only this, uh, doing all these processes in an open, transparent, and uh, accountable. And uh, from my view, I think government should be the leaders in this uh, multi-stakeholder, not for their interests, but the interest of the whole country as a whole. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Jackson, for that for that view from developing country perspective. You know, and. Uh, who would like to continue on that, you know, so is the, please. Uh, 
good morning everyone um, my name is shridhi prayama ji i'm an activist and blogger and i'm currently associated with uh, isoc nepal chapter uh, my uh, uh, i have a clear uh, experience of the government uh, government from develop developing countries they don't want to facilitate uh, what they want to do is like uh, they they, they want to put themselves <coughs> up in the hierarchy and uh, they want to regulate rather than facilitate that's what has been uh, going on in our country right uh, they have been imposing a lot of uh, rules and regulation in regards to making different uh, fixed policies uh, without consul consolidating the uh, you know private sector and uh, you know bypassing the multi stakeholdership for instance recently a year year back what they did was uh, they tried to impose a uh, Uh, the use of blocking software without any consultation right so uh, it was uh, it was done in a way where the private sector or the public sector was not uh, you know they were not informed and uh, we from isoc we try to bridge that gap and we tried uh, in consolidating the fact that it it is related to uh, all the sectors right so when we try to communicate uh, later on they they did Uh, stop the project but what they said they uh, what they said was you know it's it's basically the in, uh, it's basically the uh, the line of infrastructure that they were trying to set for the country rather than you know having any policy any fixed policy so the mentality itself is very rigid it, it's just an orthodox uh, thinking about not adapting uh the multi holders multi stakeholderism rather than uh, you know being a regulator and uh, lobbying your own uh, public policy in context of uh, benefiting your uh, public organization right so uh, monopoly is there and uh, you know i think uh, itu needs to further um, have policies and mechanism to counteract and i think this is one of the um, good things that it has it has launched and probably will be more focused on this and supplying uh, open, you know um, public views regarding what the policies are going on in uh, developing countries and thank you for that yes thank you very much and uh, so thank you very much for that view you know so regulate facilitate to regulate how much to regulate you know so these are the very you know very interesting topics to uh, to explore further and i think that's part of this discussion who who would like to continue and chip in Further than this, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, uh, my name is Cheryl Miller, and I'm with Verizon Communications. And so, I just wanted to give a bit of a business perspective on it. I think overall, um, the best value that you receive is when everyone has sort of an equal footing um, with respect to dealing with some of these issues, because some of them are very difficult. And one thing, um, you know, I noted at this particular IGF, I haven't heard enough of. I've heard quite a bit from civil society, government, private sector. I think we always forget the technical community, and these are the engineers um, who really understand uh, sort of the technologies that we're building uh, for companies like us to be able to roll out new technologies um, and to further innovate and provide service at affordable prices to to. Uh, our population it's really important that we have flexible policies and that's why um you know through various models that we've been a part of in the United States very is multi-stakeholder models we've been able to work with many different groups and come to solutions on things um and we're now at a point where we're able to roll out our LTE network will cover over 290 million people um by the end of 2015 and that's something we're proud of thank you all right thank you very, very much for this for you as well because It seems that sometimes, in kind of my personal perspective, you know, something created by engineers becomes too important to be left for engineers. At least that's a public perception. Yeah, we, and we forget that as many of the issues is that actually technical solutions are needed. You know, so a good view of how to bring the technical community to the picture. And who who would like to further continue? Yeah, please, Nigel. Thanks. Yes. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Nigel Hicks and I can. And uh, I mean, thanks for doing this session. I think, uh, unfortunately, I couldn't make the uh, Geneva session, but I think this session is is very important. And uh, very much look forward to the report that the Secretary General gives the uh, gives the uh, Council Working Group in a, in a couple of weeks' time. And I hope that report will be uh, made available to all stakeholders, so we can see what is being presented to uh, 
to the to the government. So, uh, as you, as you know, many feel that that particular working group should be multi-stakeholder in its remit. I know it can't be at the moment, but uh, hopefully we can change that at the next, uh, I say week, <laughs> advisedly. Uh, perhaps it could be changed at the next uh, plenty potentiary so it represents all the stakeholders. And indeed, so that council working group adheres to the, to the eloquent words that the Secretary General has used in terms of no individual country or individual having uh, uh, a sort of uh, 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 having all the wisdom, so to speak. Uh, in, in terms of the questions, just, just, just very briefly, I, I mean, I think uh, it's, it's interesting. The first, two, the first two observations from my friend uh, Jackson and a uh, colleague here, uh, clearly governments have a, an, an absolute role in terms, of, uh, in, in, in terms of safeguarding the citizen, in terms of public responsibility, and I, I don't think anyone can ever deny that, is how governments uh, uh, sort of roll out that role or how they operationalize that role, which I think is, is important. And uh, I can't speak for governments, but when certainly in, in the 30 years that I, I worked in the, in the UK government, we, there were many examples where we got it right and got it wrong, if you, if you, if you see what I mean. And uh, in, in some of the cases where you, you got it wrong was perhaps because you didn't, uh, you didn't uh, consult in, in advance, you didn't, and, and sometimes there are reasons why you can't. I mean, you know, uh, but uh, where we made the best decisions, I think, in terms of telecoms or internet policy is, is, is where you had had a, a, a true discussion with all the stakeholders and taken their views on, on board. So I, I, I think that's a, a factor. In terms of the, in, in, in terms of the questions, I, I mean, I think it's, 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 it's clear that all stakeholders have a, uh, have a, have a role to play uh, and that government must play an active role in, 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 in these discussions. Uh, in the ICANN context, and some of you are uh, uh, more expert at ICANN than certainly I am, uh, we, we have this fairly complex mechanism in ICANN where uh, the Government Advisory Committee, now comprised of 129 governments, we're, we're trying to sign up a few more. I, uh, I get a bonus for every uh, new government signed up. No, actually, I don't. Uh, but uh, we're always keen to get new governments into, uh, in, in, into ICANN, and the, the Government Advisory Committee play a very important role in, in, the, in the policy process of, uh, of, of determining new generic top-level domains or uh, policy uh, concerning the domain name system. So I, I, I think it's key that governments uh, uh, play that role. And, and how governments can... Uh, improve their interaction with with other stakeholders. I I, I think it's just 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 involvement. It, it, it's just having a a process within each government where where you have these where you have these multi stakeholder discussions. And we've heard the excellent uh, uh, example several times this this week of Brazil that have this this platform uh, that they've had. Uh, other countries have a platform. I know the UK has set up one. I know there's platforms in in many different uh, countries that involve all the stakeholders in terms of uh, having internet uh, policy. So I think this is one way of doing it. Thank you. All right. Thank you very, very much, Nigel. Indeed, it's not only about what, but also about how. No? So some of the good, uh, good views, how the governments could both operationalize their role and engage stakeholders and consult with other ones. So who will like to continue on that? Is there? Okay. Please. Uh, here. Oh. You see, now you know, once you wave the hand, I, you know, I'll pick it up on that. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Olivier crepin um chair of the Athlite Advisory Committee in ICANN. So, sorry, I'm, I'm in the same sort of location as Nigel earlier. Um, I was saying hello, actually. But um, <laughs> he actually mentioned You'll the... You'll say hello the, um, to all of us. Yeah. He, he mentioned the multi-stakeholder group uh, that is taking place in the UK. There's a multi-stakeholder multi advisory group on internet governance, a MAGIG, uh, another acronym. Uh, and uh, that has uh, civil society, private sector, and uh, um, members of the government as well um, that work together on absolutely everything that is uh, ITU-related. All of the work uh, that comes from the UK is now passed through this pretty large committee. I'd say it would be about 20 to 30 people. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it works pretty well. Uh, we managed to reach consensus on, on most of the issues, uh, and it's been very, very productive. Uh, and it certainly reflects the view of a very wide cross-section of the UK uh, community. Okay, thank you very much. Just another view how to make it very practical. No one got... Who would, who would like to kind of share their experiences and their views on that further? Please. Something, something in the back, please. Yeah. 
and then and yeah, and afterwards. Um, is this? Oh, all right. Um, I'm Garland McCoy with Invenio, and I just wanted to follow up, particularly on on uh, some of the uh, uh, points that were made uh, by uh, Verizon, uh, particularly in in terms of having uh, a, a little bit more role from the technical community in this multi-stakeholder environment. Because I've been a you know a fellow participant here since the beginning and um, uh, want to keep uh, – there are lots of policy issues that, that come and go, and we seem to have one burning platform after the next, and all of it's good. And, and I really do like the multi-stakeholder because it's a check and balance type of approach in this. But I do want to keep – I do try to keep focused on uh, trying to find uh, e examples of what's actually being experimented with and what is working in bringing – uh, broadband to the next uh, billion global citizens, things like, uh, uh, again, uh, Verizon, uh, other companies, Google, Facebook, uh, the, both both the LTE as well as Wi-Fi, white spaces. Uh, uh, the, that process that, that uh, is both challenging because you've got a very uh, a, a challenging environment getting past the urban centers out to where the really the, the people live out there but it's it, it's I, I think if we had a little bit more on these technical areas uh, both fixed and for example mobile wireless in there that, that we'd keep coming back to what I think I hope everybody's goal is in this room and, and that participates in this environment which again is continuing to focus on bringing this incredible uh, platform of, of engagement to the next billion and then the next billion and the next billion. Uh, and um, uh, so, uh, you know, that's where I live anyway is, 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 and this is a great forum to, you know, keep, keep focusing on that. There was one final point in, uh, I had a workshop bringing broadband to those who need it most and one of the gentlemen there from India was, was mentioning, look, uh, there's no way we in India, and, and I think this probably is, you know, representing a lot of developing countries, that we can build the actual infrastructure, schools and hospitals and medical centers fast enough, the brick and mortar fast enough for the current youth, the, the current uh, huge com youth community that we have out there that we want to provide health care and education and these, you know, libraries and all this too. Um, except the only way possible to even think about that and consider that is through you know e-education e-health and these you know so so it's it's really a magnificent thing i just want to keep making sure that as one again as one burning platform of of issues comes and goes and we and we have a conversation about it that we though keep the longer you know mission in mind that we're all hopefully again you know focused on which is you know, keeping those billion people coming. Thanks. Thank you, thank you very much, Carolyn. And it's very important to focus on what really matters and and look and and then see what really works. You know, and I think and usually we then see that we most of us, as we said, we agree on 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 those on those issues. You know, so and they really in Vino, at least from our experience, you know, is doing great great work in many developing countries to on those type of topics. And you know, also remembering that also in Vino is a with us. Forum of OD as well, so it's, and it's one of the good examples how to work on the things that really matters. Thank you very much. So please, yeah. Thanks. Hi, uh, Dominique Lazansky, GSMA, and I live in London. And I'm just going to follow up on your point because I'm also on the Internet Governance Advisory Group across the UK. Um, the other thing Olivier kind of left out was that we constantly have consultations on every. Um, every kind of input from, from this to whatever other inputs we have across Europe as well. Um, and that's something that works really, really well because people who have the time and can do it can get involved and then others drop out. It depends on the time. But the other thing I wanted to point out in the UK is we just don't have the Internet Advisory Group. We have sector boards and we have sub boards that have that are smaller and have to do with um, like open data or transparency, you know, so we've actually sort of focused on specific issues. Um, and they're also very all-inclusive. 
But one thing that we have in the UK that I consistently never ever see um, across the IGF, and I've been doing this for about three years now, is we have um, a lot more involvement from the startup community as well as from um, people who support the startup community, like financial institutions, law firms, things like that. And there's, um, that's a really important engine for driving growth in the UK and I believe across the world as well. Startup meaning even one person kind of startup thing. Now they're just getting on, getting on, doing their work. But I think it's, um, it's a voice that we hear quite a lot in the UK that I think is, is missing. And somehow getting them to talk to government really, really would be uh, advantageous. And I think we've done it more successfully there. But it's just a point that I wanted to, to make. It's, it's, you're truly right because it's always it's important to include all the voices, especially those who are creating the future or, or are able to create the future. We, you know, and public consultations is a good point there. Of course, sometimes some people sometimes say you know it's, that maybe it's becoming a spam. No, so there's so many public consultations and it's becoming difficult to keep up with all of them. But then we hope we're not adding to the noise there, but um, but getting some benefit. But indeed, but at the same time, it's good to hear the voice of everyone. Okay, who would? Who would, uh, who would like to continue and add? But especially, we've been hearing from private sector quite a bit now, so what about civil society? Is there any views uh, from, uh, from you there that you think, you know, what, what is important on, uh, you know, to, for the governments to think of when operationalizing their role in internal governance? Round table. Civil, civil society seems to be very shy, you know, if we have some people here, but. Well, okay. Any any views from other stakeholders? I'll be I'll be calling up on on the people, you know. Then so we can say hmm? we just worked out from civil society. So you see, that will be then for you, you know, to immediately to be contributing, you know. So what should what civil society thinks should be the role of the government and uh, how it should be operationalized? <laughs> no, it's a good, sit down. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. My name is Anjan Bose from Ekpat International. Um, I, I just came in, so I'm lost. What's the context? What's the question? Is it uh, what's the role? What you think is, should be the role of the governments okay. in the context of central governance and how the government should behave and how they should act um, in that? In, in the context of security, the in, context of, in any, anything. Anything. Yeah. Well, definitely encourage participation, wider participation. Um, understand what the issues are within the civil society that um, the government can play a role uh, in terms of uh, we know that the internet is uh, has evolved from a very academic and government owned institution to a much more uh, wider public domain so um, there are issues uh, that has come up of late that um, has put some constraints uh, into the you know, that trust relationship, whether people should be sharing the privacy issues and those. And we all understand that this is such a, uh, such a hu wonderful tool. Uh, we cannot go back. We cannot retra retract. So one is to inspire the trust uh, of the civil society in using the space and also what the government can do um, in terms of guidance, in terms of building the infrastructure, the security, cooperation between the governments, as this is a, one of the tools that the governments share responsibility across the globe. So this is not limited to a particular country. So this is a different kind of challenge. But in terms of the civil society stakeholders, we also have to work with the government, support them, uh, and also share openly what kind of uh, benefits and features we expect, uh, whether it's uh, service delivery, um, you know, e-governance, uh, the benefits that we can get out of the Internet from this um, uh, wonderful tool. We also have to be very vocal about our participation and how openly we can participate in the process. Thank okay. you. So indeed, the government still has a role of engagement, and that comes back to what we've been hearing a bit before, you know, so the government's... And so engagement doesn't just necessarily happen, you know, so it needs to be built. So who would like to continue on that or some other topics or related topics? You, you, you said it just let you settle in, so. As Sanjan said, uh, 
government have to do as engaging the civil societies and uh, one of the issue we all facing I'm from a civil society background taking care about child protection online uh, funding part actually because uh, European Commission and up to some extent in, in America there are getting funds civil societies are getting enough fund in order to work in this domain but I'm from India basically from Asia the funding part is totally ignored so I'm not saying government have to fund but government have to facilitate the funding for the civil society in order to come up with uh, what you call the resolution programs and uh, you know activities another thing is <coughs> uh, government have to little open in, in order to collaborate with the international uh, organizations what we face is a bit it depends upon the government to government definitely but it should be an open approach to see what is going on and uh, every government definitely consists of culture and religion and uh, they have local uh, localization of the programs have to be done so by looking into that international collaboration is important very much important and to open up their mind to listen to the, the international community and that is what every government do. and again it is government to government it is totally different because every government consists of different countries and cultures so that ought to, ought to be taken care you, you want me to talk about the other one yes please yeah, yeah. yeah the same thing mm -hmm. interaction with the other stakeholders. basically the, the problem is we are coming from a democratic government uh, phrase now when we started uh, uh, talking to the government now the government don't have time to listen to us at this moment because next year the 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 election is going on so they are all waiting so one year before they'll start the election process so we we'll, we have to now wait see who is coming mm -hmm. so we have to start lobbying the new government from here onwards in order to get uh, uh, the the proper hands with the government or uh, with the with the say in the government so that's another problem in a, sorry to say that in a democratic environment i'm not saying it's a problem it's an issue uh, we have uh, civil societies facing every uh, and uh, once the government come they will see another one year to see exactly what is going on and it will take another one or two years to settle up then the time is over the new government is coming there's another problem in in, in this but Again, as far as the uh, international collaboration is concerned, we are getting a lot of support uh, from them, uh, from the international organizations. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So it's indeed always a challenge how to fit policy circles, uh, policy circles with, elect, uh, with the political cycles. Yeah. So please. Uh, yeah, I, I am from Nepal, and I wanted to add uh, something. Uh, I seriously believe uh, the government has a dynamic role of not just, you know, trying to build up that uh, multi-stakeholdership, but it has its role of doing surveys and fundings and all that is possible because it's the government that sets the, you know, bridge among the um, public as well as the private sector and building that trust is important, right? If the government is more rigid in, uh, in not facilitating the platform, then how can, you know, it, it it go in a smooth process. Multi stakeholderism is not possible without the government's role. So it's like government has to be practical in every possible way of finding the commonalities and building up that trust. So I think it's it's more important for government to you know research and uh, do everything that is possible in facilitating the process rather than being uh, rigid and uh, you know being a regulator. So. I, I, I just focus on, you know, focus the policy of government being more flexible and moving towards the path of multi-stakeholderism. So. Okay, thank you very much. Please, uh, some addition. Yeah, I would just want to add on to what uh, Mr. Mustafa had said earlier. Um, you know, well, from our work, we know globally um, not all, all governments are uh, in the in internet safety space. Uh, there are issues of safety, awareness, education, as well as protection mechanisms for children. 
um, um, from sexual exploitation and other forms of exploitation. Um, in many countries, in underdeveloped countries where the knowledge is missing uh, about the issue, uh, but technology, the internet is penetrating through either mobile phones or um, you know, very uh, aggressive deployment of infrastructure. And that's primarily coming from um, you know, the economy that generates. You know, uh, all governments these days understand that uh, they need to be part of the, um, of the internet and use the e-services uh, for their own economy. That's not coupled with the same kind of uh, guidance, uh, the framework that needs to be generated and set up to protect children. So the understanding and guidelines. Um, ITU COP uh, is doing a phenomenal work in supporting the government um, into you know organizing workshops and stuff like that. But um, one is the interest from the government has to be there, but also resource mobilization. Um, we understand that not all governments will be equally equipped uh, with the knowledge um, of child protection, uh, but and that's why the question of um, you know cooperation and engagement with the civil society, other uh, expert organization, and who are working in this space is important. So. Uh, it's a question of how that can happen. The interest definitely should be there and should be uh, what we are doing, trying to do is to get the governments interested and pay attention to this very important issue. It cannot be one or the other. It has to happen hand in hand. Yeah, thank you very much. And please, uh, there, I'll, I'll give a microphone. And come. Thank you. My name is Mary Uduma. I'm from Nigeria. Uh, first, I want to ask, what is government? Who is the government? It seems as if we are separating ourselves, who are part of the government, from the government. The government is there to protect, build trust, and um, make sure that um, there are uh, rules and rules of engagement as well. I'm from a developing country, and uh, my environment is the environment that uh, knowledge on internet governance is not too uh, um, pervasive. So participatory regulation is very, very key. I worked with the regulatory authority, telecom regulatory authority before now, and openness and participatory regulation, consultation, do practice, but when it comes to the final uh, rule making, the final policy making, the final legislation making, um, the views of all the stakeholders may not be taken into consideration. Government in its own wisdom will take the ones that they feel that is, is, would all go well for the, for the environment. But I think there must be a political will in the part of government because government will not change its normal due process because after consultation it takes time to now bring out the regulation and law and things would have gotten to another level. So political will to take in the views of the multi-stakeholder or other people or the members of the public. And consistency in, in uh, regulation and rules will be also very important. So um, in Nigeria, we are trying to, do, to, to kick off our child online protection. And we're coming from the multi-stakeholder uh, approach. But if the government doesn't lend its weight behind it, it will not move. So in my environment, government is very, very key in making sure that things, uh, that, you know, multi-stakeholder process is um, taken to another level. Um, we have just started the IGF in Nigeria, and the major financiers to our IGF process is the government of Nigeria through its agencies. 
the multi-stakeholder, the actors, the private sector, they didn't give us so much support like the government. So it is, it is the government uh, muzzle that has pushed our IGF, national IGF, to what it is today. So it depends on your environment. We, we don't have the business sector in our, in our environment. The government is the highest spender in our environment. So the engine of growth has not been handed over to the, the private sector. So that's why we depend more on government. So the role is very, very critical in our own environment to push for the process to, to go on. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. And I think for me, the, the very, very useful insight, how you, how you phrase it, you know, what is the government? And I think it's also sometimes these discussions, and from my personal perspective, we have this dichotomy, you know, civil society versus the government, something versus the government, one or the other. And indeed, as you say, in many countries, it's not, that distinction is not that clear, and its roles are not that necessarily said. And it's not necessarily that one against or one versus, you know. It's, it's, uh, the government comes from... You know, sometimes, you know, what you're saying, the government comes from the same people to help the same people, you know, and to do something there, you know. And that's kind of interesting perspective to bring, you know. So I think that's, that's very, very useful. And if, when maybe anyone would like to add to that, further to that debate, or looking around. Because it's also, I think, just before I'll call up on someone, uh, is uh, also part of that debate. And I think we've been hearing before already, and I think that's also adds that about different cult, multiculturalism as well and multi, you know, various backgrounds in various countries, you know, because that's I, I liked from previous intervention. I think that continues that. Whether that role of governments is the same in every culture and every country, that's, I think, another perspective that I've been hearing today. So I don't know, you know, whether, again, if someone would like to add something on that perspective as well, so in addition to anything, what do you like further to add? We'll start. I see the gentleman uh, there looking around. So maybe you, you would have some ideas. Yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, the gentleman in the middle. And uh, the, do you, would you would you okay? No, no. Next to you. No, no. Next. Just yeah. No, yeah. No. <laughs> All right. Someone who would like to contribute. Okay, so we have we said everything, all uh, everything well captured. Everyone's happy with the views, and uh, you know. So then I think on that on that note, I'll we'll just uh, we'll just. Uh, oh, thank you so very much. Thank you. My name is Hong Ki Cha from South Korea, and I'm currently working for the ministry. But I originally worked for the technical community, and after the plenty pot, I'm going back to the technical community. Um, well, Korea used to be a very, very poor country after the Korean War, but thanks to the government, I, I mean, this is my personal opinion, not Korean opinion, thanks to the Korean government, we could develop very, very quickly. And now I think we are uh, an okay country in terms of um, economy and everything. We have Samsung, LG. But anyway, um, the importance of governments and civil society and technical community, they are all, I think they are all equal. And this is, and what makes them different is the culture and their economic status, in my opinion. So, for developing countries, we used to be a very developing countries, but in that case, the role of the government is extremely important. So, we should not, um, um, uh, what do you call it, hinder them to participate in the internet governance and even the economical development and everything. So I think uh, we are talking about ITU and some UN agencies and everything. So what I would like to suggest is that, as one of the gentlemen already mentioned, the government should facilitate to participate, uh, to make civil societies and all the stakeholders participate in their multi-stakeholderism um, uh, whole process. And as a person from the technical community, I think technical standards well, ITU also handles standards as well, but those standards can help uh, build a better um, consensus model because those standards, 
those published standards are already, um, how do you say, um, consensus-based, and they are already agreed, and all the stakeholders, even the government take, uh, sector members, even the member states agreed that that, uh, that, st uh, that standard is very good. So I think, especially for the developing countries, if we take advantage of these technical standards and make good use of their uh, infrastructure development, then it will be much better for uh, us to discuss how to um, in, how to make governments to involve the whole thing. So, thank you. All right, thank you very much. That's a very useful uh, perspective. Our development, please. Hi, I would just say um, I actually used to be a government official before my uh, my current position, and I think one of the things that I used to struggle with, um, I would get caught up with respect to my goal and how I got there, um, and so I would just say. Uh, with respect to governments, there's not only one way of approaching things, um, and particularly in this space where you have so many uh, new issues that are arising um, with respect to the technology itself. I would say to be open, um, to be as con consultative as possible, um, because civil society, the technical uh, organizations, and industry, they're all willing partners, and there's a lot that you can learn from them. And there are also some non-regulatory models um, that can achieve the same result, even achieve a better result. Um, and so to be open to those possibilities as well, to, not, uh, to think outside the box and not only view a, a, a one-side-only approach. Thank you. Thank you very much. Multiple perspectives and information. One interesting thing that I'm hearing, like as a side thing, when people introduce themselves, is like how many people in this audience are... I was the government, now it's now private sector. I was the government, now civil society. I was technical community, now the government, and maybe back to technical community. So again, this, you know, just, just an interesting observation. I'm not making conclusions out of that, but I think that's also you know, one of the you know, inputs into this process, uh, how, how those boundaries, are, you know, how those boundaries, especially when you speak about specific people, are not that, uh, not that clear. All right, anyone else? To f add some concluding thoughts, wants to, to stamp it all and oh, pl please. Um, this is not my opinion. I'm just asking a question to to gentlemen in the front. Uh, I saw in the beginning of the meeting uh, a gentleman from I don't remember, but he asked you is sector member of a. Uh, uh, okay to participate in the council working for a group for the internet policy, then I guess they cannot, so he just left. So I would like to ask you why sector members are not allowed to participate in the council working group for, the, for this issue. So I think this, this question as such is also a good input into the report because, because that report will go to the body that actually is deciding on that, those issues. So I think what, you know, so because that is a Currently, this is a decision through a council working group and the council and plenary potentiary of the, of the ITU. So I think, you know, part, I think that is also, this is a question to us, but I think it would be kind of difficult for us to answer it today, but it's definitely something that we can bring in this report and for the membership to consider, you know, and to see that there is this question being raised, and uh, maybe they should consider that further. Sorry, John. Yeah, yeah uh, John Carr with um, Civil Society. Never worked for the government. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I, I'm sorry I came in a bit late, so I hope this point hasn't been uh, done to death previously. But uh, the, the, the multi-stakeholderism, I think of as, as, in the same way as I do communism. Great idea, pity it doesn't work. Um, in other words, what multi-stakeholderism actually means in reality is that the people who can afford to buy aeroplane tickets and can afford to spend time going to conferences like this uh, get, get to participate in the illusion, at any rate, that they are influencing what's happening on a global scale with, with the Internet. Mean, mean, meanwhile, in the real world, uh, Facebook makes decisions about its privacy policy. Google makes decisions about street view. Uh, Companies are making actual decisions that affect people's lives in the real world 
uh, and we come to meetings like this and discuss things to do with a high-level strategic kind of policy type questions which have no immediate bearing or impact on most everybody's everyday experience of, of the internet. And so there is a disconnect, it seems to me, between what we think we're doing when we come to events like this and the way that the world is actually working in relation to the internet itself as people actually experience it. And another, another uh, point, you know, I work with, with the child protection community, if you, if you come at meetings like this, when, when you hear people speak about the internet, you would think that the only thing that matters is overthrowing tyrannical governments, helping you know, uh, free speech, uh, helping people to connect uh, across the world, and that the way parents, the way schools, and the way people actually use the internet is almost of a second order of importance. And actually, the, you know, for the huge majority of people using the internet, it's, a, it's about very practical day-to-day -day things. It's about parents helping their kids to learn. It's about teachers in classrooms teaching. It's about kids interacting with each other. It's about me buying books uh, from Amazon or getting uh, presents sent to my daughter on the other side of the world. You know, and, and you would, that type of conversation about what's actually happening to real people in the real world is almost always absent, uh, in my experience, because we only ever focus on how's this going to affect tyranny, how's this going to affect totalitarian regimes, how's this going to affect our idea of free speech, and so on and so forth. And there is a worry, basically, that at some point all of this will explode because things will happen in the real world. Governments, national governments who get elected or get into power in one way or another will not be able to resist the articulation of people's dissatisfaction with the way things are working in, uh, in practice. So this is a, a highly political environment that we are in. Um, and my, my fear is that, as I say, multi-stakeholderism is a bit of a sham. It's really about who can afford to buy airplane tickets, stay in hotels, take time off work, uh, and come to speak at events of this kind. It's a real pity because the idea of multi-stakeholderism is wonderful. But if you look at, I mean, look at some of the organizations represented on the MAG, for example. They represent organizations that nobody in my country, and I'm sure in many other countries, have ever heard of. They're tiny, tiny little organizations. Why are they on the MAG? They're on the MAG because they've got the time to come to meetings like this and play the political game and get on there. So, you know, I don't think we should run away with this idea that multi-stakeholderism is... Uh, it's, it, it's very, very difficult to make it work, and I don't think the IGF has made it work yet. Thank you. That's a very useful perspective. And as an added benefit, you most probably answered the question that Jesse May asked before, why we don't have any startups representatives of startups here. You know? so maybe that's part of the answer. So uh, uh, anyone else? So I, not, I think I'm, I'm pretty happy to close on the John Carl's very... Very nice intervention, and I think very, you know, raising some very broad questions, but I think they're very valid questions, how everything should be operationalized. And, and, or we do, we do have still? Sorry? No? Okay, so thank you very, very much then. And uh, I'll, well, you will see that report, and we'll see you in other events uh, today as well. And uh, who I won't see, so have a great trips back home. And thanks very much.